aboard a 2.8 litre automatic Land Cruiser 70 Series. What have I done? One week of ownership comparing the new with the old V8 dinosaurs. This is the third day this week we've had this beast off-road. Last time I said, mate, are you in for a treat with this review? Well this time you're in for an even bigger treat. Have Toyota made some shortcuts or have they just been clever with their design? New lights tested or not. My mate's first impression coming from a Prado. Oh, let's go. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> and my first two changes. Zero to 100 km per hour test and will the new powered mirrors fit the older version. Am I excited? Am I impressed with it? Yes I am, but I'm also disappointed because there is a design flaw with that vehicle. Two weeks ago I released a video when I test drove for a brief moment, only two hours by the way, the silver 76 series Land Cruiser. Since then, Whoopee! I have discovered so much stuff. I've discovered a design flaw in the bonnet, which I'll get to, but I've also discovered how bloody good this thing is in peak hour traffic. Around town, rat racing. In that sense, it's a big step up. Before we get to that though, why? Why did I buy this Land Cruiser? Why did I spend $88,000 on this car? I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I've done this, eh? Hey. You better believe it. I better make this count now. There are things you can't do to a borrowed vehicle. For example, changing different tyre sizes to test that out, or proper off-roading, proper wheeling, or taking it away for a weekend and experiencing the vehicle how it is, getting to know the vehicle as a daily driver. 640 k's in. The only way you can find that out is to buy one, and that's exactly what I've done. I am the human guinea pig. I have two V8 70 series Land Cruisers. I'm just so curious if that is going to be able to carry on that legacy of the 70 series. Is it going to carry this forward? I want to be the guy who shows you how this plays out. This is really going to play on my own mind as this journey goes. And I'm so invested into this project. Last time I mentioned the bonnet's quite flexible due to pedestrian safety or something, that's what I was told. But because of this, when it's idling, it vibrates. Eh, no biggie. But when you're driving, the bonnet moves. It's got this, it wobbles. I can see it now actually, it's wobbling. You can see it moving. And because it has so many different shapes on it, it does catch your eye when you're driving with the light. Just something to be aware of. Let's pop the bonnet and I'll show you something else that I've just discovered. With adequate lighting and a workshop, I can show you more of these imperfections I didn't notice the first time. The hood lining stops here. It explains the condensation I've noticed on, on the vehicle at one stage, probably because of that. The other thing I noticed, this doesn't even touch the structure at all. That must be why it's flexing so much. So I wonder why that's happened. As a person who's just spent 88 grand on it, mm. Another thing, this looks like an afterthought, but I'm seeing the good side of this one. Any wiring to this engine bay, to this vehicle, you want to put lights on the front, you want to run some camp lights or side lights on, or a compressor. How about that? You can get your hand right inside here. Here's an image of my Troopy. You cannot get your hands in here. If you're going to wire up the vehicle, you could put relays, fuse blocks, bus bars, they could all sit here and sort of hang inside here. The other thing with a 70, when you do hit a water crossing pretty hard or a puddle or something, water splashes up here. With water crossing and all the fun comes electrical problems sometimes. Many times in the past, someone's had an issue where water's entered the relay. Well, I was next to Ronnie and I said, what the f is that? It was smoking. It's smoldering because the relay got wet. So if you can tuck your relays away inside here, that's actually a really good thing. But it does look like an afterthought. What do you think? Yep, changing the tyres. They may say all-terrain, and the pattern is all-terrain, but the sidewalls aren't as strong as a proper all train. In fact, I can't even read anywhere how many of a ply tire this is. So you'd be guessing that I'll be putting uh, probably a 10 ply on this thing. And that's exactly what I've done, 10 plies. 
This tyre has seven plies in the tread, three plies in the sidewall, meaning it's much stronger, it's much more durable. If you think I'm being over the top by changing the tyres already, well, I have a history of slashing and damaging stock tyres. Stock tyres. A set of decent all-terrain off-road tyres. Exact same size as before, so I'm still retaining the same fuel economy. 265-70 R16. This will give me the exact same rolling resistance, but also the same circumference. And the noise in cab, I can confirm, hasn't changed either. It has a more of an aggressive sidewall, which also helps protect the sidewall. And I've had these tires before. I know they're good. Harry's first time in the 76 with the new motor. The 2.8, it's a very familiar motor. Uh, brakes are excellent. The steering is a 70 series, so it takes 9,000 locks and doesn't turn. Um, hey, it's a 76, it turns way better than the 70. It turns way better than the 79, <laughs> I know. There's just not that much actual lock. Um, it's, you know, it's a bit bouncy because it's a st stock leaf spring thing that's designed to have weight in it. Um, the acceleration, the gearbox, everything just feels really familiar. It feels just like my Prado, but it's, it's obviously quicker than my Prado because it's got the same power, but it's way, 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 way lighter. Yeah. <laughs> my Prado is 700 kilos heavier than stock. Try the power haul. Oh, where are we? Power haul. Let's yeah. go. Whoa! <laughs> That's good! That, that boogies! Yeah. Wow! Wow, okay. I want to get over this way now. <laughs> that, um, that is faster for sure than I think my Prado's ever felt. Really? Yeah, I reckon. It kind of, I've got a throttle controller on mine. It kind of just feels like putting my thing on full. But um, don't you have eco, normal and power? No. Right. No. Because the Hilux has that. Yeah. No, the Prado That's doesn't. Strange. Yeah, they, in the Kakadu, they have a throttle controller. Yeah. But uh, in the VX and, the, and GXLs, they don't. Okay. So, yeah. But no, this thing... I'm, I'm impressed, and I'll be really interested to see how they go with weight, because the V8s didn't really feel weight, that was kind of their party piece, is that it's just like low down, torquey, this thing you still have to rev it to get power, so I don't know if it's just going to live its life way up in the revs. People do tend to load more on a 70 as well. So the, oh, yeah. the wagon, eh, well, what about the 79 dual cab? That's where the question lies. And a troopy, I want to see a mm. troopy as well. Alright, we're revealing too much of where the back cave is, so we're going to go. <laughs> This thing is like a rocket, I'm telling you. It drives like a tuned V8, like a tuned V8 turbo diesel VDJ. That's what it drives like, not kidding. No word of a lie. When you want it to go, you want to pull out in front of traffic, you can do that in this more confident than you can in a manual V8, I'm not kidding. 100 test, three, two, one. Something not touched on yet, the lighting. What's it like on the road? <laughs> it's far better than any 70 series I've ever driven when it comes to being able to actually see. The candle lights I have on both of my 70 series, the V8s, are absolutely shocking. This new variant, the lighting is bloody awesome. The daytime running light, they've really grown on me. And with the projector bulb as well, you are able to control them from the inside of the car, which is another surprise. Five is as far down as you can go. Zero is as high as you can go. It's like a workhorse. The vehicle you would use for the bush, on the farm, or carrying heavy loads, or towing. When you hook up a trailer and the back squats, that's when you can adjust the light so you don't get flashed by every single truckie that comes past you. The Hilux I had before didn't even have that feature. I would have to get out and adjust the bulb from the inside of the engine bay. This, flick it while you're driving, that is such a good thing to add to this vehicle. The lighting at night is actually really good. Now, if I'm indicating left or right, there's no way you're gonna miss that. That thing there is horrendously big. <laughs> when you're turning a corner at night, you're getting bounced back from this, eh? <laughs> For the first time ever, the 70 series finally has some decent mirrors and I've had a chance to use them all week long. These mirrors, I would love to put these on my Troopy. The only thing is, I can't do that. These doors aren't the same size but they're also not the same shape. On the 76, they're rounded. 
on the troopy, they're kind of like squared off, rounded, straight. 76 wagon and the dual cab 79 shares the same doors, exactly the same doors. Continue the fun fact, the troopy and the single cab 79 share the same doors and the same shape. That mirror will not fit on this vehicle, unfortunately. The 70 series, nearly 40 years, these things have looked identical from the back. If you sit behind a 78 series on the highway, you don't really know which make and model that vehicle is, which engine it has, until you overtake it. Until you can see that front end, perspective is everything. Have Toyota been smart or clever with sticking to the iconic and legendary shape? I mean, when you see a Land Cruiser, you know it's a Land Cruiser. Or have Toyota just been lazy and they're just trying to save cost? For example, they haven't really had to spend much on a redesign for a long time. Which perspective do you have on this? I've actually done my first modification already to this vehicle. Believe it or not, you better believe it. Another shameless plug. You might want to be quick because these are selling out super fast already. Hopefully there's still some there when you get there. These armrests will now come with this patch that matches the exact shape of that Velcro. Just letting you know. If they do sell out, don't worry. There's a whole nother bunch being made right now, coming soon. You likely have as many questions as I do about this vehicle and how everything is going to go. And the more I look, the more questions I have. For example, how many mods can you do to this vehicle before you get close to GVM? I doubt it would be as many as what we might think. The V8 is a big donk. When you want to take off with a heavy load, it handles it pretty good. And that's where I want to see how far can you take this 2.8. Just a quick update, fuel economy, what have I gotten so far? Well, over 640 k's into it, we are running 12.5 litres per hundred. Now, I have not been babying this thing around. It was up around 13.5 litres per hundred after a lot of off-roading and then a lot of highway driving, I got it down to about 11.8. So it did sit on around 10, 11 on the highway without a headwind. Headwind about 12-ish, just in general, we're looking at 12.5. I was expecting a little bit better than that, but a brick is a brick. It's going to not have the best wind resistance, but it's definitely better on fuel and it's bloody zippy. So far, I have really, really enjoyed this vehicle. Let's keep one thing in mind. It's a brand new vehicle. New things are exciting. New car smell, no scratches, no dents. Hang on, there are a few scratches that I've so far. It's a new car, it's exciting, it's a new toy. What will happen four months time? When the novelty wears off, it's not a V8. Where will I stand with my view on this vehicle? It will shift, I don't know which way, and that's part of the excitement for myself. But I can tell you one thing, in six months time, I can't have three vehicles. It's a pain in the ass to juggle three vehicles for, for a start. The cost of having all three of those vehicles is another thing. The way I'm seeing it right now, that 76 is likely going to go in six months. But hey, anything can happen, right? I bought a 76 series with a 2.8 litre six speed automatic. Who would have seen that coming? I didn't even see that coming. I had the mindset of not even going near a 2.8 litre Land Cruiser. What have they done? Well, here I am now. Wait till you guys see how this thing performs off road. It is phenomenally fun to drive. Is that even a word? Phenomenally? Phenomenally fun to drive. It's awesome. So easy to drive as well, but there are some drawbacks that have been exposed from driving off-road and well, wait till I reveal those. I want to do a bit more testing as well. And some of these drawbacks are going to be amplified by bigger tires. I've got 33s sitting there waiting to put those on. And then we've got the big 35 inch test coming up as well. All right. Hope you enjoy watching that. Got any questions, get them down below and I'll see you next time.